In this video, I'm going to walk through verses 1 through 5 of chapter 1 of the Gospel of St. John. This is the Latin translation that St. Jerome made of the original Greek text written by the Apostle John. We're going to go through and read this uh, so you can hear the pronunciation of the language. And then I'm going to walk through word by word and provide the, transla uh, the translation that you'll need to complete your lesson in our Latin Reading 1 course, okay? Because this is Christian Latin, we're going to read it with modern ecclesiastical pronunciation. So you should make sure that you follow along in Latin Grammar 1, where we study the sounds of the letters, uh, the different pronunciations, and all of the grammar that we'll see in these readings. But you don't need to know that to take this course and work through these readings because I'm going to read everything for you and provide word-by-word -word translations in every lesson. Okay? So let's start with our first reading of John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum. Hoc erat in principio apud Deum. Omnia per ipsum facta sunt et sine ipso factum est nihil, quod factum est. In ipso vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum, et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebre eam non Comprehendeunt. One spelling error to fix here, and then we'll get started. Tenebre. Okay, so now we're going to go and simply translate word for word from Latin into English. Uh, maybe I'll use a red marker so you can see the translation a little easier. In principio. The word in is a preposition which simply means in, in English. Principio means beginning. You see, I'll just write the translation under each word as we go. But to make clearer English, we'd like to say in the beginning. So we'll add the word the and simply put it in parentheses, so that we remember that that word the in English did not come from a word in Latin. Next we have the word erat, which is a verb that means was. The noun verbum, which means word. In the beginning was, and we'll say the word. In principio erat verbum. In the beginning was the word. Et is a conjunction, which means and. A conjunction joins parts of a sentence together. We have this first part, this second part, joined together by the conjunction et, which means and. Then we have verbum again which means the word. Then we have erat again, which means was. And we have the phrase apud deo. Apud is a preposition that means with. And deum means God. In principio, Erat verbum, et verbum erat apud deum. In principio, in the beginning, erat 
verbum was the word. Et verbum and the word erat apud Deo was with God. So very simple, word by word, through to translation, um, going along and simply learn the English translation of each word and write it directly under that word. That's how we walk through these translation exercises. Very simple. Line two, we have another conjunction. And Deus means God. Note here we have two different endings between Deum and Deus. This is a nominative case which identifies the subject. So Deus is being used as the subject here. And here, um marks the accusative case of Deus. And it's in the accusative case because it's following this preposition, apud, which always is followed by an accusative case noun. Going on, we have erat again here, was, and verbum again, the word. So that's verse 1. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud deum, et deus erat verbum. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and God was the word. If you read an English Bible, you'll notice that this line here is translated, and the word was God. It's not written and God was the Word. The reason why is because verbum, which is up here um, and here, verbum is our subject of this passage, and here we simply have a subject, a copula, erat, and this is called a predicate nominative. It's in the nominative case, uh, and it's a predicate, but because we have a simple copula erat, which just means was. It's almost like an equal sign. So even though Deus is in a nominative case, it's not the subject of this particular um, proposition. Verbum has been and continues to be our subject, and Deus is called a predicate nominative. Okay, You don't need to know that at this point in your lesson, but if you're studying Latin grammar, and you understand what a nominative case is, you'd want to understand if this is nominative, why would the English Bible translate it, and the word was God? That's why, because verbum has been and continues to be our subject, and deus is simply describing verbum. Okay? Moving on to verse 2. Hoc erat in principio apud deum. Here we have hoc, which is a pronoun. So anytime we see a pronoun, we have to ask what noun is the pronoun standing in place of. And here, hoc is standing in the place of verbum. This is another reason why we know that verbum is the subject of this phrase, because hoc is a neuter gender pronoun. Deus is masculine gender. Verbum is neuter. Hoc refers back to verbum. We're going to translate this as this, or you could put the same. So in the lesson, I may have both, and on the assessment, both will be acceptable. So hoc, referring back to verbum, hoc erat in principio apud deum. And to translate this entire phrase, you don't need any new vocabulary. It's just repeating words that we've already studied. So, hoc this erat was in, in, principio, the beginning, apud, with, deum, God. This word, this was in the beginning, apud deum. 
with God. Verse 2, very simple. Verse 3, omnia per ipsum facta sunt. Omnia means all things. You could also translate it everything. All things. Omnia per ipsum. Per is a preposition followed by ipsum. Per can be translated as by or through. Per ipsum, by or through him. So all things by him facta sunt. Facta comes is, is where our English word factory is derived from. A factory is a place where things are made. And this here is a participle, which means made. Facta. And sunt is the plural form of the verb is. And is translated are. Omnia per ipsum facta sunt. All things by him facta sunt. Made are. Now, when you get further along in Latin grammar, you'll learn that this expression here, facta sunt, is a special type of verb expression. But at this point in your study, I'm not going to expect that you understand those things. So we're going to learn a simple, literal translation of each word. Facta sunt. Made are. Okay? Later on in Latin grammar, when you study all of the forms of verbs, you'll understand that this verb expression here has a different translation. Same meaning, but just a, a clearer and more exact translation. But for Latin reading one, facta sunt, made are. Omnia per ipsum facta sunt. All things by him made are, or are made. We have the conjunction et again, which means and. And then we have a preposition, sine, followed by ipso. Sine means without. Ipso is the same pronoun as ipsum, but a different form. The preposition per takes the accusative case, so ipsum is in the accusative here. The preposition sine takes the ablative case, so ipsum is in the ablative case here, ipso. Same meaning, without ipso, him. Factum est. Factum est. Factum is the singular form of facta, which is plural, and est is the singular form of sunt, which is plural. So facta sunt and factum est are the same phrase, just in different number. Facta sunt is plural, factum est is singular. So it's going to have the same meaning, except we're going to change the number. So instead of made are, factum est simply means made is. Okay? <clears throat> Next we have the noun nihil, which means nothing. Quod is a pronoun, or translated as that. Could also be which. Factum est again, just like over there. Made is. And then we have a semicolon at the end of verse 3. Now, just to explain why we have facta sunt in the plural here and factum est in the singular here, it's because the subject of these phrases changes. Here, at the beginning of verse 3, we have omnia. And omnia is plural. It means all things plural. And therefore, facta sunt is also plural. Here, without him, made is nothing. Nihil is the subject, 
And nihil is singular. Therefore, factum est is singular. Nothing is made. Okay, so that's why we have plural here, because this refers back to a plural, omnia. And we have singular here, because it refers to singular, nihil. Okay? Verse 4. In ipso, we've already seen. Um, in principio, now we have in ipso. Same meaning, we have in, and ipso means him. Vita is a simple Latin word. Just think of if uh, you go to the doctor or the hospital, a nurse will check your vital signs. Those are signs of life. Um, if you want to be healthy, you can try taking a vitamin. Right? A vitamin is supposed to be some sort of substance that, that improves our health or um, supports life. Vita means life. In him, life, erat, was. Et, conjunction, and. Vita, life, erat, was, lux. Lux is another noun. Um, it means light. And then hominum means of men. Let's read verse 4. In ipso vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum. In him life was, and life was light of men. That sounds a little clumsy. And if you look at an English Bible translation, you'll see that they add the article here before life. They say, and the life was and they add the article here, the light of men. Remember, in Latin, there are no articles. There's no, there's no word in Latin for a or an or the. And so when we make an English translation, we can add those words, the English articles, whenever we find it necessary to make the translation clearer. We just need to make sure we remember to put them in parentheses to remind ourselves that they're not coming from any Latin words, okay? So, verse 4 reads, In ipso, in him, vita, life, erat, was. In him was life. Et vita, and the life, erat, was, lux hominum, the light of men. Verse 5, et lux in Tenebris, I like to pronounce this as tenebris because of rules of Latin accent, but you'll often hear this pronounced tenebris. Okay, so tenebris, tenebris are both acceptable. Et lux in tenebris lucet. Et tenebre, or tenebre, eam, non, and then we have a long word here, Comprehenderunt. Okay? Verse 5. Starts with the conjunction et, which translates as and. Lux, we'll translate it here as the light. In tenebris, we have in again, means in. And then tenebris, we're going to translate it here as the darkness. Tenebris means the darkness. Now, tenebris is a, is a strange word because, as you'll learn in grammar, this is a plural Latin form. And yet it has a singular English translation. The reason why is because this idea of darkness What's actually expressed in Latin would better be understood if we translated this as shadows. Okay, the idea of darkness being in the shadows. So the Latin idea is plural. But in English we say in the darkness. And so our English translation 
is singular. Okay, so that's a, a plural noun, but it's going to have a singular English translation because this is just a unique word. All right, and then we have luchet, which means it's a, it's a, it's a verb which means shines. So, and the light in the darkness shines. One thing to note here, if you look at luchet, you'll see that it's similar to lux, and it makes sense. Lux means light, and the verb luchet means shines. So you can see these have a common stem or common idea behind them. Here the noun, light, and here the verb, shines, luchet. The light in the darkness shines, et, and tenebre, we have a different form of this word, a different case, et tenebre, and the darkness. Here, this is an ablative case, and again, you may not be moving along yet in Latin Grammar 1, but if you are, you'll appreciate this. This is in tenebris, which is the ablative case. And here we have the nominative case. Because in this second half of verse 5, tenebre here is the subject. The darkness, eam. Eam is a pronoun that means it. This pronoun, remember, anytime we see a pronoun, we have to ask what noun is the pronoun standing in place of. It here refers back to Luke's. How do I know that? Well, Luke's is a feminine gender noun, and it's also singular. And when I learn pronouns, I'll learn that aom is the feminine singular form of the pronoun. So when I see that, I know it's referring to a noun that's also feminine singular. And when I look through here, tenebre is not singular, so it cannot refer to tenebre. But when I come back, I find lux, and it's feminine singular. So, and the light in the darkness shines, and the darkness, it, that is the light, non comprehenderunt. Non is an adverb, that means not, and I know I'm running out of space down here. Comprehenderunt, very simply, can be translated as did comprehend. And I'll explain what that means in a second. So verse 5, et lux in tenebris lucet, and the light in the darkness shines. Et tenebre eam non comprehenderunt, and the darkness Aam, it, not, did comprehend. The idea here of comprehend takes some explanation because um, normally in English today, when we hear the word comprehend, we think of understanding. Reading comprehension means testing whether a student understands the reading. And there actually is importance in that meaning because because what that means, comprehend to understand, means to take hold of an idea. When I say um, he comprehends the lesson, what I'm saying is with his mind, he has taken hold of the idea. That's the idea. But the real idea, the literal meaning of comprehend means to take hold of. Um, a, a similar word in English, when a police officer arrests someone, uh, another word we use for arrest is apprehend. To apprehend someone is to take hold of someone, to arrest someone. That's the same idea as comprehend. To comprehend means to take hold of. We use it to express understanding because we take hold of an idea. But that's a figurative meaning. The literal meaning means to take hold of, literally, to take hold of. So we're saying the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness, 
did not comprehend or take hold of the light, it. Okay? So that's our English translation of verses 1 through 5 of chapter 1 of the Gospel of St. John. Remember, this is the Latin translation that St. Jerome made of the original Greek text written by the Apostle St. John. Let's read through the Latin one more time, walk through the translation from beginning to end, and wrap up this first lesson. Starting at verse 1. In principio erat verbum, et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus erat verbum. Verse 2. Hoc erat in principio apud Deum. Verse 3. Omnia per ipsum facta sunt, et sine ipso factum est nihil quod factum est. Verse 4. In ipso vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum. Et lux, uh, this is verse 5, et lux in tenebris, or tenebris, lucet, et tenebre eam non comprehenderunt. Before we get to the translation, let me just say one thing about pronunciation. In Latin, just to help you with accents, anytime we have a word that's two syllables, and you see that many of these words are two syllables, the accent is always on the first syllable. So that makes a very simple rule for translating. Okay? So anytime we have a two syllable word in Latin, the first syllable is accented. If we have a, a word that's more than two syllables, like principio, omnia, um, hominum, tenebre, comprehenderunt, the rule for where to put the accent is a little more complicated, but just to start simply, anytime you have a word of two syllables, the accent is always on the first syllable. Okay, now for the translation, in principio, in the beginning, erat verbum was the word, et verbum, and the word, erat apud deum, was with God, et deus erat verbum, and God was the word, and remember my explanation for why your English Bible will say, and the word was God. For this line right here okay but in our translation in latin reading one we're not going to write and the word was god we're going to keep it exactly um, word for word in our translation and god was the word verse two hoc erat in principio this hoc refers back to verbo this was in the beginning apud deum with god Verse 3, omnia, all things, or everything, per ipsum, by him, facta sunt, made are. All things by him are made, made are. Et sine ipso, and without him, factum est, made is nihil, nothing is made, quod factum est that made is, or that is made, in English. Verse 4, in ipso, in him, vita erat, life was. Et vita, and the life, erat, was, lux hominum, the light of men. Verse 5, et lux, and the light, in tenebris, in the darkness, lucet, shines. Et tenebre, and the darkness, eam, it, referring back to lux, the light, it, non comprehenderunt, did not comprehend. 
but word for word, keep it as not did comprehend. Okay, that's our translation for John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Remember, in Latin reading 1, we're producing an exact, literal, word-for-word -word translation from the Latin into the English. This is the first step of our translation work in this lesson. The next step is to copy out the English translation just as we have it here, word for word. Copy out the English translation, and then we're going to translate that back into the original Latin, okay? And go back and forth from Latin to English and English to Latin. And by the time you've done that three, four, five times, um, you'll have most of this memorized and we'll know the vocabulary and we'll be ready for your lesson assessment, okay? The instructions for the translation exercises are in your lesson, so make sure you follow them carefully because that's the method by which we're going to actually master the Latin language, okay? So there you have it, a word-by-word -word translation of John chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Now it's time to get to work studying your lesson and mastering this translation, okay? Everything needs to be learned from memory so that you can, you know, write out the Latin and write out the English translation without any help from your lesson. Watch the, intro, the introductory video to Latin Reading 1, which helps to explain in more detail the translation exercise process, and use this video to master the actual translation of verses 1 through 5. Okay, I'm going to provide one of these videos for every lesson in Latin reading and also in Greek reading. Once you make your way through a little bit of Latin reading, you're going to find Greek reading studying the same text, the Gospel of St. John. The Greek reading is very simple, just as simple as this. Okay, I hope that's a helpful introduction for you. Now it's time to get to work with your studies. God bless.